All right, well, welcome again. Um, this is a lecture um, that was an invited lecture to um, one of the VAs here in Tampa, Florida. And um, this is a, a lecture given to um, our internal medicine um, and general medicine colleagues to better understand um, the needs of military men who have sex with men, understanding STI, PrEP, and infectious disease care uh, in the general medicine practice. Um, so this hopefully will give uh, some insights into taking care of our, our veterans in a uh, primary care uh, setting as well. So uh, welcome. Um, I, I am fortunate to be a, one of the, the PIs, site PIs for a VICTARV study, um, but it does not influence this in the least, and also working on uh, some clinical trials. Um, session aims, so I'd like to talk about the epidemiology of sexually transmitted infection among men who have sex with men. I'd like to talk about um, STI screening, testing, and treating guidelines for uh, men who have sex with men. Understanding PrEP, um, who qualifies and how to implement it. And understanding why HIV screening and rapid treatment is important. Um, and then also talking um, a little bit about general uh, MSM screening. So uh, starting with MSM medical terminology, so men of sex with men medical terminology, um, I would draw your attention to the MSM sexual health standards of care. Um, and this is a wonderful handbook that is uh, printed with a collaboration of um, the National Coalition of STD Directors um, and CDC affiliated organizations. Um, I wanted to point out the updated terminology um, for sexual orientation and, and gender identity. Um, and um, the experts on this topic are, are we always look to the, uh, the Fenway Institute for um, education and uh, terminology updates. Um, what we like to say is gays, bisexual, and other MSM. Um, cisgender relates to gender identity corresponding with birth sex and transgender um, essentially indicates a gender identity or expression that differs from birth sex. Um, and folks will usually identify with their gender from a very, very young age. Um, we can have male to female transgender and female to male transgender. And we like to say sexually transmitted infection because um, infections such as these usually, they can be cleared and um, uh, usually are self-limited with the exception of the HIV virus or HSV. Um, and we like to say pre persons or people living with HIV AIDS um, and a person who injects drugs. And of course, antiretroviral therapy, we're fortunate that all ART now is highly active, so we don't need to worry about using the word or acronym HEART. Um, so talking about preventative health care for men who have sex with men, um, there was a nice publication from the American Family, uh, American Academy of Family Practitioners, um, and I thought these were I think, I think very good in terms of um, general understanding. Um, I think understanding MSM health, um, knowing that the, it's a diverse group of folks, um, even um, within men who have sex with men, um, and that there's a lot of, um, a lot of issues uh, to, um, to this population that you're, that you're, you're working with and, and helping through um, their general health needs. Um, and these are some of the terms just to kind of understand um, and, um, and, and kind of embrace in terms of terminology. Um, and this is, again, an inclusive of all MSM. Um, so that's why we use this, the CDC and um, providers use this term. Um, also, there are multiple barriers uh, to providing healthcare for MSM, whether or not um, HIV positive uh, or uh, reactive or non-reactive. Um, Essentially, um, as a general practitioner, one wants to, of course, have a welcoming environment, um, make sure that certainly there's, there's appropriate signage, but also um, you know, subscribing to um, friendly magazines and inclusive um, literature um, can also help, and also posting um, inclusive uh, websites um, or references um, if, you're, if your office is connected to social media. Um, and um, also um, knowing that MSM will, of course, need the same comprehensive health care um, and in addition to additional targeted care. So um, that's very important. Um, and then also um, facilitating training for staff. So um, many of the staff in your, your office will uh, need to be brought up to speed 
um, for um, some of the, the issues and timely issues affecting MSM populations. Um, not only um, STI, but um, also increased uh, meningitis risk, um, and then some uh, certainly stigma, psychological um, stresses, and substance use. Um, also, there's a plan for um, follow-up as well, um, and, and uh, this is very important. Um, in terms of uh, STI epidemiology, um, MSM are uh, disproportional uh, to, um, for STI infection. Um, that's for s several reasons, certainly social networks, but also uh, stigma and uncertainty in, in getting care um, in an appropriate and, and timely manner uh, can also contribute. Um, and you can see an increased risk here. Also, um, want to bring your attention to the gynecological isolation surveillance project. Um, this is um, essentially um, what this is the CDC um, shows uh, that we have um, increasing rates of Messier gonorrhea as well, with um, increasing resistance to ceftriaxone, um, highest in 2011, but also coming unfortunately up as, as well in uh, 2016. Um, you can also see um, rates of um, gonorrhea and chlamydia. Your general infection um, is also um, highest um, for in terms of all uh, populations, um, but also among MSM populations. Um, primary and secondary syphilis, as we know, generally um, is still unfortunately very high, especially in the Southeast uh, United States. Um, and our MSM population is highest at risk. In the southeast, we see a lot of uh, neural syphilis and ocular syphilis, so general practitioners need to be uh, aware that um, certainly this is at high risk and to test for syphilis for any unusual uh, skin lesions or neurological or ocular symptoms. Um, this was reviewed in another lecture, but I wanted to bring it to your attention that um, our MSM um, population is at highest risk for HIV acquisition as well. Uh, especially in the southeast um, and also in Florida. Um, there's, a, uh, I think, a wonderful graphic that is very true, the bar before the bar. So I think you have to, one has to realize in general medicine and infectious disease practice that um, men who have sex with men are undergoing uh, undue burdens of um, difficulty and stigma in their own lives. Um, and you can see the terms here. Um, and essentially this is kind of predates any um, HIV acquisition or STI acquisition and kind of unfortunately sets the stage. So the better we can do to eliminate stigma and decrease um, the, the negativity, the better we will with um, health uh, promotion. Um, talking about STI prevalence, um, there's an article by Knight et al. Um, from the same one quoted before, but essentially um, some populations of risk-taking behavior outweighs the concerns on consequences. Um, there is that, um, I think I'd like to highlight a couple of things, but essentially lack of support from family and friends, ostracism, um, and then among our, our younger MSM that HIV infection is more of a manageable condition than a life-threatening disease, and so that can encourage some risk-taking behavior. Um, MS, um, STI screening guidelines, um, it, it is a little bit um, increased screening just because of the higher risk profile. Um, one wants to screen at least once a year for syphilis, chlamydia, and gonorrhea um, for all active uh, MSM. And essentially MSM who have multiple anonymous partners should actually be screened every three to six months. And um, we'll talk about it, but we do triple screening. So we do um, oral, rectal, and urethral screening uh, for GC and chlamydia. Um, because a lot of these infections can be missed just on urine screening alone. Um, this is a nice um, protocol, health protocol at a glance, um, kind of talking about what to do on, on when. And we do recommend the triple site screening and also would like to add the meningitis vaccine to your vaccine armamentarium. The HIV vaccine now can be given up to people aged up to age 80, uh, 45, which is important. So, um, this is triple site screening. Um, we do not use urethral swab. Urine is, is fine uh, for men. Uh, for women, um, we do recommend, um, if, you're, if you're really worried, cervical um, or vaginal swabs. But 
uh, for men this should be fine. Um, also the, the patient can collect a, a rectal sample and recommend at least yearly for uh, MSM and then every three months for PrEP or high risk. Um, these are some of the questions that you want to ask for our MSM. Um, if there's um, anything that one needs to do um, in terms of asking uh, sexual health, um, also if there's any um, basically um, activities uh, surrounding sexual encounters and, and group um, sexual encounters would be very important and it's important for a general practitioner and an infectious disease physician, anyone asking these questions to really become comfortable um, and kind of factual about asking risk um, risk categories, and these are excellent resources as well. So MSM and PrEP, um, as stated, we have a, a high risk of HIV acquisition. Um, PrEP uh, currently is a pill, Travada, one pill once a day. It was FDA approved in 2012, um, and we do use it in common with risk reduction condoms, needles, and syringe exchange programs, and STI screens. Um, Travada currently has minimal side effects, especially during periods of risk. Um, TIF is not recommended, um, and we are working on injectable uh, PrEP, such as calvitagravir. And this is a nice slide from clinicaloptions.com, uh, but essentially its effectiveness um, with uh, PrEP does improve with adherence, and women need to be on it for at least 20 consecutive days before it's effective. I would not recommend PrEP on demand for women. Uh, for men, um, the, the data does show that it can work, but would recommend it every day. Um, additional MSM health resources. These are excellent resources for further reading. Um, and feel free to, to look at those. And uh, thank you. Uh, we do offer uh, MSM health, uh, HIV care, and PrEP services through our uh, VA telehealth services team. And wanted just to thank everybody who made uh, this possible. And um, we are serving our CBOX. So uh, check with your local VA. They probably have telehealth as well, and if uh, you need telehealth in your VA, please uh, give us an email and we can hopefully help you set up a program. Um, and this is what we do in our infectious disease telehealth consultations, and um, we're happy to, to show you how we do it as well. Um, all right, thank you so much for your attention, and have a wonderful uh, rest of your day.